We are to lead the people to look up Amen. and not to look forward. That is what is supposed to be there in Christianity. Well, Number two, the Bible says, just as Moses lifted up serpent in the wilderness, so will the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever looks unto him will be saved. You know, the Bible says, if you will lift Jesus up, he will draw all men unto himself. Salvation is dependent on looking up. But when you are preaching the gospel of prosperity, you are telling the person that your tomorrow will be better. Amen. You are telling the, the person that you have hope of becoming millionaire tomorrow. Hmm. So he is not looking up. He is not looking up on how he will get his life better. So it's not the same spirit that is governing the body of Christ. We have laid up the emphasis of God. As good as prosperity is, it comes by adherence to scripture, by obeying the word of God and not, you know, making it a priority. It comes naturally. Hallelujah. Amen. So, one hope, which is heaven, they will have one Lord. It is only Jesus that is our Savior. If Jesus is the one that saved you and saved me, then we should be living the same kind of life. We should be regulated by the same scriptures. Then, one Lord and one faith. What is our faith? Our faith is the Bible. The Bible is the standard for heaven, for Christians generally across, you know, across the world. We, our hope, our faith is heaven. So, holiness movement is saying, we want to bring you into having the same reasoning, into knowing that it is not denominationalism. We must be united by the word of God. If we are practicing the word of God and it is the spirit of God lead, leading us, then we should be living one life and not some people are believing this. Some people are saying uh, tolerate women. Some churches, even women are wearing trousers as their choir uniform. It's there in Christianity. So, and some say, ah, there's no, uh, no, you must not wear that, you know. Some say, no, you can't different things. Some say you can use the hair attachment, some you can use hair, you can use this. Some say no, it is confusion. If we are going by the same spirit, then we should live one life. Are you not seeing Muslim? If you see a Muslim woman that is committed to her religion anywhere in the world, will you not know? Why is it not happening in Christianity? Because they don't have the truth, but they have the life. We have the truth but we don't have the life. That is the confusion in Christianity. And holiness movement is saying, God wants us to have one life because in this seven oneness, there's one whole, one baptism bring us all into Christ Jesus because it is in Christ Jesus that we are baptized. And then one God, which is Father over all. These are seven oneness that is supposed to put us together, but we are not seeing it. Then if you come to verse 12 of the same uh, Ephesians chapter 4, just verse 12 says, for perfecting the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. But you can understand this better if you include verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. You know, all these offices that God is given, he is giving it to the body of Christ. But a particular denomination will hold their G.O. He is our own. This G.O. is not their own. You know, so the truth that he had here only is limited to his own denomination. Meanwhile, he is a gift to the entire body of Christ, but he is not flowing because he is tied down in one place because in the name of his denomination. Another denomination says, no, he does not belong to us. As much of the truth that he has, we don't want him. He is not of us. He does not belong to our assembly. We are no longer one body. But if we are one body, then as an apostle, 
Can you see the fivefold ministry is represented by, by the finger? You know, apostle is this male, I mean, this big thumb. You know, you can see that it can touch all the other fingers. You know, apostle, it has the gift of all other um, ministry inside himself. Apostle Paul was an apostle. So he can be evangelical, he can be pastoral, he can be teacher, he can be all in the ministry. Then this one is the evangelist that goes to preach because the evangelist is always saying, Thus says the Lord is always warning. This one is the finger for the evangelist. <coughs> no, this one is the finger for the prophet. The prophet is always issuing warning. Issuing warning. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. You know? Then if you look at the third finger here, it is the longest. Is that not so? That is the office of the evangelist because he goes further to open way for others to come in. If you see this one, is what? The pastor. Then, you see this one is the teacher. The teacher is the smallest finger that can enter your ear and scrub it. He has more. He can actually give you the basic of the Bible, bring you down. When the evangelist has turned the ground and has gone, it is the teacher that will actually build your foundation and cause you to grow up. Yeah, so, now, in this ministry, God has raised the movement so that the body of Christ should not be divided. The apostle is made to serve the body of Christ. The prophet to serve the entire body of Christ. And when this thing happens, the Bible says in verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, it is the conglomeration, this ministry put together and their teaching that can bring about the perfection of the sight that can qualify one to enter heaven. Then for the perfecting of the same for the work of the ministry and for the defining of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of faith. We are also to be united by the word of God and by the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. We are, by this ministry, supposed to be brought into a perfect man because God wants us to be perfect as himself. And it can only be done from the church and unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. The word of God through this ministry is supposed to produce the statue, you know, the height of Christ from his head down to his feet. This word is meant by the ministration of these different offices. Is supposed to produce us to grow up to the height of Christ because we are his body. Then, verse 14, verse 14 says, And we have to be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every way of doctrine by slate of men and killing craftiness, whereby they lie in way to deceive. The speaking truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for from whom the whole body is fitly joined and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making make it increase of the body unto the divine of himself. So the point I want to make here is that God want this movement to let the Christian body see that the unity is talking about it's not necessarily that all denominations will gather in one place and become one church. No. The unity that is occasioned or brought about by the word of God. Unity that is centered as led by the spirit of God. Unity that will make you have one word. Somebody is prophesying for another one is prophesying against in the same church. So this one is not from the same spirit. Let be united, and that's what the movement is out to stress. Then another aim is to support believers, ministers, ministries, and churches with free Christian material for spiritual development and holiness. All the pastors and ministries that identify with holiness movement. What we do, 
we produce free materials just as these messages we can produce them in cattle send to a particular ministry distribute this thing in your church when you are going for evangelism distribute these testimonies like the one for our sister Teresa now can be mass produced sent to Congo you know it is in their own language and they will get it better so also given to as many that would like because when they hear it they see the truth of scripture so holiness movement support believers we have given material things we have given money we have supported many pastors and ministry to cause the work that they're doing to prosper that is why we are not a church we are rather helping the work that you are doing the oppression of holiness movement is not supposed to diminish your congregation. Rather, it's supposed to encourage you to do the work better than the way you are doing it now. It's supposed to make you preach the truth and let the people know the truth and that it is this truth that will set them free. You are supposed to emphasize that God is depending on holiness and righteousness to admit you into his kingdom. So, disconnect from worldliness and ungodliness. This is what we are pushing them to raise members and supporters of holiness revival movement worldwide from churches and Christian ministry all over the world who will submit to their life who will submit their lives to biblical holiness and be spiritually, materially, evangelically equipped to make others righteous and holy in their churches and in the society around them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the scripture here is 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2, which I read yesterday. It said that, let's also look at it briefly. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Verse 2 says this. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we are supporting what we are to raise members from the body of Christ. The members are pastors, they are preachers, they are evangelists, they are church workers. We are raising them up. And then we are committing this gospel truth to them so that they also can go back to their congregation and teach it there. We are going out for evangelism, preach it there. This truth that we are revealing to you is what we want you to go and preach. So we are bringing this truth unto you so that as you hear it, commit it to others who will carry it out faithfully too. Then, Number seven, to establish Christian bookshop in many places within and outside the nation, equipped with holiness materials for the promotion of holiness in the churches of Christ in the world. Now, these books that we have produced in much quantity now, there are, if you go to our headquarters in Abuja, we have big bookshops, and some states in Nigeria and outside the country also have books, uh, bookshops. The essence of this bookshop is to get this truth across to you because we discover that most books of Christianity, they don't emphasize holiness, truth, and righteousness. They are books of prosperity, how to make progress, how to make this thing. These are the books that are rather everywhere. So, but with this, when we produce this book and they are in bookshop, people will read. And Romans chapter 10, verse 17 said that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Is that not so? So when they read this book, it will generate faith in them and then produce the word of God in their life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Then I'm soon rounding up. So, to establish the body of believers called Holiness Revival Movement in every nation that will sponsor the production and holiness of uh, materials of the ministry and other recommended holiness materials. So, 
Many of these books were produced. There are some people that have come. God raised them. Go and help to produce this. Thing. Some people will sponsor the production. If God is leading you to produce this thing, to multiply the cities, you can do that even here in Cape Town and make them available for many more to watch. That's one thing too. So, and many other more. But I want you to know that God is actually interested in you. Knowing this aim, I said this can get all these things in your, the books are there. If you buy any of this book, the aims and the objectives, they are there. Hallelujah. Amen. So, now, I want you to know that the ministry is worldwide. This ministry, which was inaugurated in 2010, is just about six years now. It's just six years now. But the operation of the ministry has covered major countries of the world. And it is in, across Africa, you see? And we organize conferences here and there. I hope and believe that many of you here will go to Abuja uh, this coming December for our international conference. We are ready and we are prepared to receive you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, are you a Christian? Are you truly born again? Are you heaven ready? Are you living in His holiness? That is the question. How ready are you for heaven? How prepared for you in, uh, for heaven? Or are you only warming the church? Or you are interested in performing function and role in your church and yet not committed to holiness, not committed to truth, not committed to righteousness? You know, you can be busy in the church without holiness and end in hell. But the priority of God is holiness. Why not embrace holiness? Why not see the beauty of holiness? Why not see the emphasis of God on holiness? And take it very serious in your life. I want us all to stand to our feet as we pray. Stand to our feet. One mission of holiness movement is to bring sinners to salvation. Are you here and you are not born again? Close your eyes as we pray. You are not born again. You are sure your Christianity is not taking you to heaven. You are sure you are only warming benches. You are not born again. Sin is still in you. You are still in immorality, in fornication. You are still a liar. You are still captured by the passion of this world. You are still, you know, following illicit desire. And you are here. I want you to know that God is interested in you are inheriting heaven. So he wants to bring you to salvation. Are you here and you are not born again? I'm going to pray specially for you. Raise your hands up as I pray for you. Raise your hands up. Yeah. You can take further step. Come forward here. I'm going to pray for you. God bless you as you come forward. Come forward with every boldness. God is going to do a, a new work upon your life. God is going to give, do a regenerating work in your life and make you fit for heaven. I want you to pray for these dear ones that have come forward. They want to reconcile with God. After today, you will see that their life will begin to be new. Their life will be refined. They will become new creatures. I want you to confess. I want you to Begin to speak to God. Thank God for bringing this message your way. Talk to God from your heart. From your heart, say, Lord, I want to be a Christian that will enter heaven. I want my sins to be forgiven me. I want to be a heaven-going Christian. Write my name in the book of life. Be praying that in your heart. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this one that have come forward. Show them mercy. In Jesus' name, I pray. I want you to say after me, Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Thank you for hearing, for bringing your word. Thank 
Thank you for bringing your word. Thank you for causing me to believe your word. Thank you for causing me to believe your word. Oh Lord my God. Oh Lord my God. I regret that I live in sin. I regret that I live in sin. From today, oh God. From today, oh God. I cast my sin upon you. I cast my sin upon you. Forgive me completely. Forgive me completely. And make me a Christian. And make me a Christian. Every power of sin in my life. Every power of sin in my life. I destroy it in Jesus' name. I destroy it in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. And become the king and ruler of my life. And become the king and ruler of my life. Write my name. Write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these dear ones that have come before you tonight. That have want to reconcile their lives with you. Oh Lord my God, show them mercy. Forgive their sin. Cleanse them from every unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Forgive their sin as they confess it before you. Because they have not covered their sin, oh God, show them mercy yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every power of sin in their life, I command it broken out of their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Every power of ungodliness in their life, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh Lord, give them the joy of salvation Please. and write their names in the book of life. Please, my Lord. Make them heaven fit. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Put your hands for Jesus as they go back to their seat. The ushers take note of them and attend to them thereafter. And then you are a Christian, but you are not in his holiness. Because you are, it's not only to bring you to salvation, but to bring believers to his holiness. You are a believer. You are not living a holy life. Raise your hand. We are going to pray with you also. Let's close our eyes. You want to come into his holiness. Put your hands up. I want you to talk to God and say, Lord, make me a holy Christian. Bring me into your holiness. Sanctify me by your word. Purify me by your word and cancel my name from the book of carnality. On a Christian that is not living holy. Remove me from such list and make me heavy worthy. Father, I pray. I want you to talk to God. Talk to God, show me mercy. Talk to God, show me mercy. And bring me to your holiness. Bring me to your holiness. Every power that is making me to cleave to ungodliness, to those spamming, to those uh, hair attachment, to those reform, to the jewelry, to those rings you are putting on your on your fingers, to those beads around your waist, on your legs, ask God to forgive you. To those trousers you are into as a woman, you a man bonking, bobbing pong here, and you know, hanging your knicker, your trouser below your buttocks. All those things makes you unclean and unacceptable to God. Those chains you are wearing around your neck, ask God deliver me from them. I want you to speak to God. God is here to deliver you. God is here to set you free. God is here to liberate you and make you fully his own. Come talk to God because God is his ears are open to hear you. Don't keep shouting. Don't keep silent. Ye that make mission of the name of the Lord. Don't keep silent. You that identify with the name of the Lord, don't keep silent. The spirit of rebellion that make you to resist truth, that make you to close your eyes to truth. You have heard what our sister said. God was disappointed with her and started crying. Jesus was weeping for her. That's why he's weeping for many believers today. Many believers have refused to come to the righteousness, come to truth, busy in the church singing. Busy in the church ushering, busy in the church playing music, and yet their life is not right with God. God wants to transform you. Can you cry out to God? Forgive me for all I have done. Forgive my uncleanness. Forgive my unrighteousness. Forgive my sin. Forgive those immorality I still play. 
those homosexuality, those lesbianism, those kind of things you do, ask God to show you mercy, to show you mercy and forgive you. That's the intention of God. Every power of rebellion in your life, I command it broken in the name of Jesus. Every disobedient spirit, I put it down in the name of Jesus. I put it down in the name of Jesus. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Be glorified and be magnified. Please, In Lord. Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. I'm going to pray for those that are sick among us. Who is here and your body is not uh, you are not well and you want God to intervene in your body from the crown of your feet to the sole of your feet. Put your hands up as we pray. Can you put your hands up? I want you to lift your hands up and tell God what you want him to do for you. The Bible says wherever this gospel is preached, we should heal the sick. We should raise the dead. We should cleanse the leper. We should deliver the people from demonic possession. That the sick shall recover wherever we go. I want you to tell God, intervene in my case. Intervene in my case. Now that I have heard your word, oh God, intervene in my case. Intervene in my case. Oh God, make me whole. Oh God, make me whole. Yes, the power of God is right here. And God is going to do impossible things in your life. God is going to regenerate you. God is going to replenish. He's going to cause hell to come upon you. He's going to replenish your body system. He's going to make you whole from the crown of your head to the soul of your feet. Just begin to talk to God. Intervene in my case. Intervene in my case. Lord, this sickness, I must not go back with it. This deformation, I will not go back with it. This blindness, I will not go back with it. This deafness and dumbness, I will not go back with it. This demonic possession and obsession, I must not go back with it. God intervene in my case. Intervene in my case in the name of Jesus. Intervene with my case in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hand where the pen is as I pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you have opened your heaven over this congregation. Lord God Almighty, let your power come down in Jesus' name. Let your fire come down in Jesus' name. Let your miracles come down in Jesus' name. Every power that have held this one under captivity by the name of Jesus, by the power that is in the word of God, I bind every strange spirit operating in the life of anybody here. I bind that same strange spirit and I command that it get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Out in the name of Jesus. Amen. You, the spirit of insanity, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I bind you and I dismiss you out in the name of Jesus. Amen. I insist that you must go yes. out in the name of Jesus. Amen. You, the spirit of confusion, you the spirit of insanity, wherever you are from, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Amen. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Out in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I come against every diabetes, every diabetes, every hypertension. I come against the spirit of blindness. I rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. I rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every blood sight, I command healing over you in the name of Amen. Jesus. All cataracts in the eyes, I command you disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every deafness, I speak to you, disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the power that is in the name of Jesus, I set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. Every heart pain, I come against you. Cardiac arrest. I arrest you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I arrest you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Out in the name of Jesus. Amen. You must go right now. Amen. Out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every this, every kind of uh, abdominal pain, whatever it is, whether it is in the kidney, whether it is in the liver, wherever you are, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said that one is not the place of God. Oh Lord, my God. I faith and bring healing upon such parts of the body in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God, make them whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. I command them, heal in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every ailment that is in this body, I command you to disappear. Disappear. Amen. Disappear. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. You were wounded for their transgression. You were bruised for their iniquity. The chastisement of their peace was upon you. And by your strife they were healed. Oh Lord my God, let this healing manifest in their mortal body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Manifest in their mortal body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, make them whole. Yes, Lord. In their spirit. In their soul. In their body. Yes. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Yes. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs>